chapter 11. Barnstorm Anderson. Not to be confused with Crosby Anderson. Thanks to Ribbit, I'm still on the Golden Eagles. It's the nicest thing any teacher ever did for me. Not that I love teachers so much. It's their fault I'm an SES 8. I'm not unteachable. I'm definitely not stupid. I'm like any other kid. I can learn. But if you give me the choice to, I'll pick that. Uh, the choice not to, I'll pick that. They were totally cool with letting me slide so as long as the trophies kept coming in. But now that I can't play anymore, all of a sudden my grades aren't up to scratch. Funny how that wasn't a problem last year when I beasted in three sports. I load up my tray in the food line and hobble out to the cafeteria. It's not easy to balance a big lunch when you're on crutches. As I scan the tables, this seventh grade girl I don't know, real cute, smiles and waves at me. This happens to athletes a lot. We're kind of celebrities around the school. I'm trying to figure out how to wave back without dropping either my tray or a crutch when her gaze veers off to my left. She's not looking at me at all. She's waving to Karnowski, one of my teammates on the Golden Egos, who's coming up beside me. It's like a gut punch. Karnowski is the scrub who never even got off the bench before I landed on the injured list. Now he's somebody, and I'm somebody you look right through. Sup, Anderson, he mumbles. Stepping in front of me, he and the girl connect, and they take the, ta they take the last two spots at the front table, the best location. Last year, half a dozen people would have scrambled to make room for Barnstorm Anderson. Not anymore. I can take a hint. I'm a golden eagle, but not really. What have I done for them lately? If I can't put points on the board, I'm dead to them. Not even Ribbit can change that. I keep hobbling, head held high. I'll die before I let them see that I care. It stinks that just moving across the cafeteria has to be such a major operation. The way I could move used to be what made me who I am. I guess that means I'm nobody, at least until next year. Another problem, I've hung out with the jocks for so long I don't have I don't I've got nowhere else to go. I set my lunch down next to Aldo and Rahim. As I lean my crutches against the side of the table, one of them tips over and whacks Aldo in the shoulder. Hey! He barks angrily. Chill out. It was an accident. It wasn't an accident. In my athlete days, my mind was always on the field or the court, junking and cutting and faking imaginary defenders out of their jock straps. Now that I'm off sports, I don't do that anymore. My poor mind has nothing to focus on. So I spend my time thinking of ways to get a rise out of Aldo. It's almost too easy. Aldo is half-heartedly eating a bowl of split-pea soup while gazing over at Kiana, who's a few tables away sitting with Benteo and Parker. That's the rest of the SCS 8, except for Elaine, or Elaine, geez, who eats alone, surrounded by a buffer zone of empty tables. People have been keeping their distance from her ever since she chucked the, this kid into the salad bar. Even the lunchroom lady... Even, sorry, even in the lunchroom, Elaine rides with pain. While Waldo's staring at Kiana, I reach over and dump half a shaker of black pepper into a soup. I can't help it. It's almost not my fault. Raheem snickers and doodles a napkin sketch of Aldo with smoke coming out of his ears. Meanwhile, Kiana catches Aldo looking at her. Embarrassed, he picks up his soup bowl and guzzles what's left of pepper and all. A split second later... A green geyser of pea soup sprays across the room, propelled by a scream. "'What did you do that for?' he rasped. "'I can't answer because I'm laughing too hard. So is Rahim. When Aldo sees the napkin sketch, he stabs it with his spoon, which snaps in half. That gets us a caution from the lunchroom monitor, who raises the quiet alert level from green to amber on the traffic signal at the front of the cafeteria. "'You've got to tone it down, man!' I manage fighting. I manage fighting to control my laughter." Everything makes you fly off the handle. Not true, he bellows in my face, and the traffic signal goes to red. Now nobody's allowed to talk for the rest of the lunch, and it's all Aldo's fault. Rahim and I exchange the first bump under the t exchange a fist pump under the table. Maybe we should get one of those uh, lighting traffic lights for our classroom. Afterward. When we're walking back to room 117, I mean, everyone else is walking. I'm thumping on my crutches. I can't resist rubbing a little more salt in Aldo's wounds. Kiana was watching Kiana was watching you the whole time, I assure him. She probably thinks you're nuts or something. Did I ask you to put a pound of pepper in my soup, he demands. 
okay, but you don't have to get so mad about it. You're mad at me. You're mad at Raheem. You're mad at the cafeteria for changing the chicken nugget recipe. You're mad at Rabbit. I'm not mad at Rabbit. Rabbit. Ribbit. <laughs> he mutters. You said you were before. Well, yeah, I changed my mind. Fine, I agree. Everything makes you mad, except for Ribbit. And I stopped bugging him because I know thinking about Mr. Kermit fighting with the office to get me into the pep rally. I keep thinking about Mr. Kermit fighting with the office to get me into the pep rally. Back in room 117, the rest of the class, with the rest of the, jeez, I don't know what's happening here. Back in room 117, with the rest of the class, we can't help but noticing a bright green, the, <laughs> no, not this word again. Oh no, here we go. I want to say Vesvula, but I don't think that's right again. Vuvuzela. Uh oh, it's taking forever. Vuvuzela. 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 I don't know why that is such a tough Vuvuzela. word. Vuvuzela. 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 Devil bent sticking out of our teacher's trash can. If Mr. If Ribbit thinks that he can get rid of all those things one at a time, puts Mr. Rahim, he's in for a really tough spirit week. I can't understand what makes him tick, puts in Kiana. Most of the time, he never opens his mouth, but blow a babuzila and he'll scream at you. He'll scream and o scream you in opera. Wow. They make him mad, I say, with a wink at Aldo. He's the Grinch, Mateo pipes up suddenly. I thought he was Squidward, Parker reminds him. Mateo shakes his head. The Grinch, definitely. The Grinch hates Christmas because he can't stand the noise, while Mr. Kermit hates spirit work because he can't stand the vesulas. Everyone hates something, I retort. I don't like lima beans. Am I, all, am I the Grinch, too? It's not just what you hate, but why you hate it, Mateo replies seriously. Indiana Jones hates snakes because he's afraid of them. Spider-Man hates kryptonite because it's his weakness. The Wicked Witch of the West hates water because it makes her melt. But Mr. Kermit is the Grinch, and the Grinch are both haters for the same reason. Noise. Miss Ribbit comes in, and the first thing he sees is all of us staring into his wastebasket at the broken... Vavzila. Vav... Ugh. God... I need Aaliyah here. Vuvuzela. Vuvuzela. <laughs> Vuvuzela. Oh, I'm going to just bring one of them to class. He, keeps a, he seems annoyed at first, but then his expression changes to one of sympathy. I have some bad news about Spirit Week. It's okay, Mr. Kermit, Kiana interrupts. We know you tried your best to talk to the principal and to let us be a part of it. Tell, let me tell you about spirit. The teacher comes alive, making eye contact with each one of us as he speaks. No one can command you to have spirit. Not principals, not governors, presidents, or even kings. There's no spirit switch in your brain that can be flipped on or off. Spirit isn't a week you can put in your calendars. It doesn't come from posters or streamers or rallies or funny hat days. It definitely doesn't come from making an ungodly racket with a cheap plastic instrument of torture that was invented purely for disturbing the peace. It's the most he said to us all year. I can't explain it, but it feels like kind of a breakthrough. Although what we're breaking through to, I have no clue. Maybe it's, maybe it's this. In all my years in school, I've never heard a teacher say something that was so complete, so completely, so completely, totally honest. 